All right, today is the day. I think it's the day. I lost the day somewhere in there, but it is a day, and we are here sitting in the car where our steering wheel should be. And that steering wheel links up under the front bonnet with some of those last components that we're trying to get fitted into there. And in the last episode, when we were doing some of that same stuff, a couple of people commented that they never got to actually see the bonnet lift up on the hinge mechanism that we were building some attachment points for. So we are gonna remedy that today and take a look at the reinforcement of the bonnet itself so that it is sufficient to support itself when it is raised on the hinges and the latches. So let's go take a look. In a previous video, we installed these bolts and did some lamination across them to hold them in place. But the bolt heads themselves, even though they're nice and flat, create a little bit of a bump, not a good surface to um, torque a hinge down to. So we're gonna throw in a little bondo here piece of plastic to keep a hinge from sticking and then just kind of press our hinge into place, create that nice flat surface that we're looking for. Now it's all seemed well and fancy, but it leaved a little bit of a wrinkles from the plastic. And so we're gonna have to fix that, try a different method, a little better method. So I got a little piece of stiff plastic, happened to be, you guessed it, lid from a blue bunny ice cream container. I'm gonna trim that up a little bit oversized, a little bit larger than the hinge. Now plastic stiff enough is going to give me a good flat surface. Smear some uh, Bondo on it, a little thin layer to fix our wrinkles. Press that down in there nice and tight. That gives us our flat surface for the hinge. Also, I don't know why I didn't do this before because this works so well that it also created a little bit of a template to go ahead and take our mixing stick, the little radius on the end of that mixing stick, and put a little fillet nicely around our flat mounting place for the hinge. Now I'm using Bondo rather than mixing up the microspheres and slurry because that would uh, take a day to cure. Bondo of course cures pretty quick, allows me to move on to the next steps. And that is I'm gonna sand the surface just a little bit, be prepared to put some more lamination layers right on top of that. Now we've got a lot of things on the bottom side of this uh, bonnet to laminate. We're gonna start with the one here in the center. But let me just step through and show you what some of the other pieces are going to be here that are included in this whole assembly for the bottom side. First off, of course, the one we're working on is a big strengthening rib that runs right through the center of the thing. It's also going to create a little bit of air dam. And here we have, of course, that we talked about before, the hinges. We'll be laminating those. Thirdly, there's an air dam between the two nose holes on the back side of the nose holes. And then there's little air dams or little panels on the side to divert the air if it doesn't go through the center of the nose holes and goes out to the sides that wants to go in a particular direction. And we'll also be adding some um, reinforcement to the bonding joint where we created when we put the little lower quarter panels onto the bonnet. A little strengthening rib going right across the fender, the wheel wheel, to keep from lateral flexing to go on on the outside. And let's get back on to our laminating all these things and I'll tell you a little bit more about each one as we go. Now this one I said is a main reinforcement rib here and it is of course also an air dam. It sits right above the very top of the radiator and keeps air from crossing over the top of the radiator and forcing it to go down through it. And it's got some heavy reinforcement in it and a couple layers of the fabric on top of that. Now the same thing here with the hinge point, we're gonna put some heavy reinforcement in it because those hinges, even though we've got the previous laminations and then bonded right to the bonnet itself, we want those to be strong enough, of course, to handle, well, a 200 mile an hour wind, say we ever got that fast. But if we don't, even at 120 miles an hour, passing or going the opposite direction of a semi track 170, that's a pretty good gust of wind hitting it. Those, those hinges need to be bonded on there pretty good, or at least the mounting points for the hinges, I should say. We'll get the air bubbles out of those and work that in and move on to this centerpiece here. Now this is an air dam, that air going through the radiator. Now we want it to exit through the little nose holes on the hood, the bonnet. So we have this little air dam to keep it from going between them instead of through them. Now this piece is not really structural, so we're just gonna throw a couple of uh, layers of twill fabric. And we have to use this twill fabric because it's the only kind of fabric that really will conform and go through this drastic of bends and curves into all these radiuses. We're just gonna put two layers on there. That'll just create enough a hard surface 
and that thing will be, of course, permanently bonded in forever. Like I said, not structural, but certainly hard enough to uh, do its job. You see me holding up the one hand uh, fabric on the backside. We don't want it to flop down. If it was allowed to lay back there on the other layer, when you try to lift up, it would pull the previous layer up. So we just hold it up and work our way around. Now these little baffles on the side, any air that does move out to the side rather than through the nose holes, we want it to be redirected down and across the brake area and out to the backside of the tire rather than into the top of the wheel well where it would create a high pressure system. Now even with this twill fabric being so conformable, we do need to cut some little pleats on these drastic little angles. The angles themselves not so drastic, but they come up across the little half inch wide kind of rounded surface. So we're gonna cut little pleats into all the little peaks and into all the valleys. That allows us to take little portions of the fabric, lay them down, and then the next piece will flop over and lay across it rather than creating a wrinkle. Whereas the wrinkle would create a little bump rather than a, a flatter surface by lapping over each other. We'll just keep working across till we get two layers onto these little edge baffles as well. And here it all is, all laminated up. We need to give it 24 hours to cure, nice and hard, strong enough that we can throw it on the car. Put some bolts in those hinges. And there it is with the hinge action. Lift up nicely. Now, of course, the only thing we need to do is put some kind of a prop rod in there. Till now, I'll just throw a piece of metal tubing hold in place for the sake of this video. One thing we found or discovered, always something that goes awry and not too bad, but when the wheels are in position, the hood cannot come up, that little quarter panel hits it. So we just turn the wheels a little locked, locked left to right, and it can open up. Now here's the little baffle. You see the little notch, one for the shock absorber, one for the upper A-arm and that will divert the air down low. Now with most of this stuff done on the underside of the bonnet and the mounting points all done, latch mechanism is ready to go. The only thing for this bonnet is gonna be that needs some finish work to get it ready for primer and paint. And one of the first things we're gonna to do to get to that point is cut out the little nose holes. And there they are, ready to go. And just as another little bonus I'm gonna show you, I've taken a little bit of a step forward in uh, roughing out the splitter. And with that in view, I'll also put a link right here. You can jump back to the previous video that showed a little more on those hinge mounting and the latch mechanism and that kind of thing. Anyway, thanks for coming by today. Come back, see us again. Jump over, see that previous video.